Hello, welcome to Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. Today we're going to be doing the main quest, The Muse from Abroad. We only have... After this, I reckon there will be two episodes of us doing a quest between this and the next main quest. There's going to be the normal side quests that would wrap up the game, and there's going to be the uh, Mycroft Missions uh, DLC that we're going to do. Um, then after that, it would be the uh, second to last case and the final case, so only about five more episodes, including this one. It's been a hell of a ride, let me tell you. One hell of a ride. I hope this child will find his place in the world. He has great potential. Yeah, that's cool. We got all of our... The local justice system in all its glory. I love, I love how the uh, things get added to this house after time has passed. Right. I had a surprise for my mother. holding an ancient Greek vase, or rather, quite a big piece of it. You had a shovel with you, John. I remember now, we dug up the vase from Greek ruins here on Cordona, and were eager to show my mother right away. For some reason, the door was closed. We knocked. But nobody answered. We thought that she was busy, so we left the vase and ran downstairs. I decided to gather some archaeological tools in order to take a closer look at the vase. But then we heard something, didn't we? Yes, it came from upstairs. The vase was broken, shards scattered all over the floor, and your mother was standing at the door. Indeed, John. I doubt it was her. Let me concentrate. That was a weird voice acting direction with that Dr. line. Dr. Richter was standing there, furious at us. Dr. Richter told us never to disturb my mother when the door is closed. He said she had broken the vase. But we didn't believe him. I bet he smashed it. The things are still here. Presumably, Mycroft never felt the need to sort through it all. Or couldn't bring himself to. No. He would have put it behind him and moved on. My brother is not one for sentimentality. God, this game is so beautiful. Alright. Just make sure everything's going good. Got a lot to analyze. Look what I found. The White King is under attack. Sherry, can you save him and checkmate the opponent in one move? You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. We can leave any time you want. My mother loved flowers. They made her smile. I remember we would bring a new bouquet every week to make her a bit happier. That's why we collected all the violet flowers we could find on the island. How do I... I wanna... Oh, okay, I've got a pen. Alright, let me see. So, I wanna see if I can figure this out. Okay. Alright, okay. So... King is under attack from the bishop there. That piece. Oh, okay, it's the uh, king retreating. 
Oh no no no! It would be uh, it would be this because the uh, bam the uh, the rook oh, has. Nice yeah. move! You saved the king and checkmated the black king with the rook. Yep. That's cool. I'm a I'm a chess grandmaster. If you didn't know. It reminds me of my mother. And by that I mean I just played a lot of chess in high school. Looks like it was damaged by a blunt object. We sort of had our own little chess club. Nothing official. Don't want to brag at all, but uh, I was pretty good. March 25th, 1869. Examination notes of Dr. Otto Richter. Over the last few months, I have asked Mrs. Holmes to sketch some landscapes. The first two were clear and accurate, but subsequent drawings quickly drifted away from reality. It appears her disease progresses rapidly, perhaps even affects her vision. I may need to consider trepanation. Was she, uh... Oh, Alzheimer's. Was she Miss Alzheimer's? London, August 21st, 1865. Mr. Seeger Moreland Holmes, the renowned archaeologist, authenticator, and historian, is dead. A mere 41 years of age, he was seized by a cardiac event during the opera at the Covent Garden Theatre on Saturday. Despite a physician's best efforts, he remained insensible and died at 20 minutes past 6 o'clock last evening. A sudden end came as a severe shock to his large circle of acquaintances. Mr. Holmes is survived by his wife, Violet, and his two sons, Mycroft 16 and Sherlock 6. Funeral services will be had, held Wednesday at the Highgate Cemetery of uh, St. James by Reverend W.E. Stanley. It's a strange feeling to read about my father's death in the newspaper. I can't recall anything except the deep feeling of loss. You were too young. It happened before we even met. It's so sad. I'm sorry. No labels. I doubt it ever had one. There appear to be residues of the bottle's contents at the bottom. Chemical analysis. Do you think the doctor could have used these tools here? I hope not. Observations of Miss Violet Holm, Dr. Otto Richter, 19th May 1868. Initial consultation revealed the patient suffers sleep problems, periods of anxiety, and slight confusion of memories. Prescribed a strong sedative to be administered daily and will continue to monitor symptoms. 3rd of August, 1868. Sedation has helped uh, minimize anxiety attacks, but Mrs. Holmes now experiences catatonia, apathy, and prolonged depressions, depressive states. Moreover, the patient's confusion has worsened, and she has begun writing letters to her deceased husband as if he were alive. I prescribed six further drugs to balance her mental state and weekly hydrotherapy. 27th of November, 1868. The current drug regimen has delivered middling results, with confusion worsening into near uh, constant delusion. The patient grows aggravated when these beliefs are contradicted, prom prompting aggressive behavior. I have now witnessed several episodes of violence against her own family and towards herself. Consequently, I order that bars be installed in the windows and that the homes be strapped to her bed at night. The dosage of all medications has been raised. I have prescribed the patient additional uh, hypnotherapy sessions as well as some mild hallucinogens. This picture was drawn by my mother. I recognize her hand. There's a date on it, 8th of December, 1868. This seems a bit odd. I can recognize my mother's style, but it's far too sloppy. Dated 12th of February, 1869. It's difficult to tell what this is meant to represent. There's no date at all. This room always reeked with an acrid medicinal stench. And here is the reason. It reminds me of my mother. Straps on the bed. Just doesn't look right. Seems this was the most frequently used medication. One dram dissolved in a glass of water administered daily. Not to exceed one dose in 24 hours, not to be given to children. Chemical analysis. By 
My gentle seeker, last time I'm yet to retrieve any correspondence from you. One presumes my previous letters are chasing you around the continent as you travel. I hope you are in good health and already on your way home. Forgive me for my impatience, but life without your voice and bright eyes is scarcely worth living. The boys need their father around too. I can tell that they miss you, uh, though as you well know, my cup is not one to wear his heart on his sleeve. In case my prior letters have been lost, know that we have relocated to Cordona. Please come back soon. Forever yours, Violet, February 1869. Oh, it brings back some memories. Oh, I would love to take a bath right now. Not this one. Surface corrosion suggests it was prone to extreme temperature fluctuations. For medical purposes, I suppose. Okay. Mother was troubled that morning. Something we did upset her. Dr. Richter tried to calm her down. The broken plate shards were all over the floor. Mycroft had to change his suit as the one he was wearing was completely stained. We had to put the tray with Mother's morning tea down, but why? It's starting to ring a bell. I think it happened in the morning. That's that crazy little thing for us. It was the morning of the 9th of April, the day my mother died. The 9th of April started off badly. My mother was anxious, then hysterical. She threw, she threw food and shouted at the doctor, calling the liar. John and I brought her morning tea, but when the shouts started, I became scared. The only thing I could, do to, uh, could think to do was hide near the bed and wait for everything to pass. Thankfully, John was there to protect me and calm me down. My mother, she, she was not just ill, but bad. God have mercy. I'm sorry. That explains why you locked the memory away. There must be more, John. I, that was the morning of her death. I need to know what happened. John! Every time you... I, I just don't... Please, Sherry, leave it be. Just breathe, John. You know that I cannot leave the last stone unturned. We are so close. I... I know. Can we at least leave it for another day? 
All right. Well, history tells us these memories are triggered by our investigation of other matters. I suspect it could not be forced even if I so desired. Thank you. How are you feeling about all this? Tell me, I I'm not the only one reeling. I'm not good, John. It feels... wrong, sad. Like they're the memories of another man. I'm struggling to reconcile my love for my mother with the reality of who she was. And worse, what possessed Mycroft to lie about it? There are precious few pieces of this puzzle remaining, John. Let us dawdle here no longer. Indeed. Wait. Did you hear that? Yes. Metallic souls. What is this sailor doing here? Sherlock Holmes, okay. isn't it? I was looking for you. Greetings. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? You could call me your new game. The rules are simple. I have something for you, but you alone must work out what that is. And that something is my prize, I suppose. You're a fast learner. All right. I cannot believe that Mr. Vogel has somehow successfully <laughs> called my attention to his gallery. You're here with an invitation to visit it, obviously. My word, you are fast, Mr. Holmes. Could you explain how you came to that conclusion? Of course. Explanations are my favorite part of any conversation. Hands me. without any sign of regular physical activity in contradiction to one who would most usually wear such a uniform. The paint in your hair is pink. I don't know of any military service that paints their ships pink, Unless they have launched a new fashionable fleet. A sailor with the soul of an artist? I would suggest, rather, a gallery employee disguised as a sailor to mislead me. How many artists on the island know where I live and of my passion for deduction? Werner Vogel is clearly at the top of the list. And you've been attempting to conceal something square-shaped within your pocket. An invitation, I suppose. An invitation to Mr. Vogel's gallery. That was remarkable, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Vogel was right about your genius. I think he may have even underestimated you. This is your invitation. Please tell Mr. Vogel that the seed has been planted. He asked me to tell you to do so, if you win this little game. Farewell. My dear Lord Sherlock Holmes, as you no doubt have already guessed, I would like to invite you to experience my art exhibition. Not only for the purpose of the contemplation of beauty, but in a more general need of your genius. You will find the gallery at the... Uh, to, oh, dude, at the crossroads of Bazaar Road and Hermes Avenue in Old City. As always, your old friend, Werner Vogel. I love Werner Vogel. He's cool You won't shit. believe it, but Werner's other idea was to put me in a dress. Yeah, Vogel's cool as shit. I, I really am interested to see how that character ends up working, sort of in the long run, and what goes on with him. Oh, Bazaar Road is down here. There's more uh, furniture to collect. I can't be forgetting about the furniture.
You'll never find s my goods will brighten up your house. They yeah, sure will. Could own a landscape just like outside without all the murder. Enjoy your purchase. this particular loading screen all the time. There can only be no more than five in the whole game with how many I've seen repeated. Extra, extra! Danger in the deep! Interested in some Cordona news? Sure am. You sound like you're reporting on my investigations. There's that. Check the front page. You won't regret it. Hello. The best and my goods will brighten up your house. When this first time the exigence of horror of Avon. Enjoy your purchase. It's a shame how there's no real easy way to get down there. There's no like fast travel point or anything for that little aisle. Best and my goods will brighten up your house. All three of you have said that so far. Music box, ghost sold separately. Enjoy your purchase. And this last one will be right next to the location we need to head to. It's a good day for a purchase. Yep. Dressing screen for those who like walls but don't want to commit. May your purchase be. Don't enjoyed. miss out on my unique clothes. And I assume, yeah. Alright, so we'll do that at the end of the uh, Or maybe at the start of the next episode, we'll do that. The exhibition. Mr. Vogel. Mr. Holmes, you came. Oh, how kind. Though now, of course, I realize it is because of my game, not the works on display. It needn't be one or the other. Your man's disguise was easily debunked, Mr. Vogel, but I shall admit that you planted in me the seed of curiosity. Ah, terrific! I had no doubt you'd put the pieces together. Let us call it an opening gambit before the real game begins. So, this little game of yours, what's it about? An enigma to solve. A locked area in the basement with no windows found brutally vandalized. I have no clue how it was possible. What about this intrusion? What happened? Last night, I was about to leave the gallery when I heard a noise downstairs. I went to the basement, but I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. It was admittedly a rudimentary inspection. 
It is not uncommon to get rats down there, so seeing nothing of note, I left and locked up the building. When I returned this morning, alas, I discovered that part of the exhibition had been torched, and there was no sign of the intruder. The mystery being, of course, that all the doors to the gallery were locked exactly as I left them. And the door to the basement is the only entrance? Correct. Tell me you're not intrigued. What was in the basement? And this locked area downstairs, what exactly was it? The under gallery. It's always shut, and I'm the only one with the key. Ah, so this is your private collection, not part of the gallery. Oh, no. It's an exclusive exhibition of eccentric pieces. Only a select cadre of artists, investors, and collectors are admitted. Not everyone deserves to have their eyes open. Well, this matter is certainly within my wheelhouse. This intrusion troubles me. Please take a look around if you're willing. The under gallery is through the door at the end. I will see what I see. I think Vogel broke into his own damn gallery. Sounds like the man to do it. Ironically, this is reminding me of Nemesis also, being in an art gallery. You sure you don't like art, Sherry? You sure you don't like art, Sherry? John is a horny boy, let me tell ya. He really is just the right side of Sherlock's brain. Back home, we've got a taxidermist. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him. A simplistic attempt at provocation. Back home, we've got a taxidermist. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him. Old and hasn't been used for a long time. The left step's length is shorter than the right. It indicates that the walker was lame. The lame ass. Closed with a metal bolt. Footprints. Size nine and a half. True artist never shows an unfinished piece. Sherry, how about some company in that dreary chamber of yours? Leave my loneliness unbroken, John. A no handprint of the uh, thing no from another world. But it looks fresh, and its coal origin ruins the effect of the extra mundane. Thing from another world. their horror. I commend them for that. I also like it when I pick up on that stuff. Sodden and mold ridden. One presumes deliberately. Does one typically presume things, Sherry? Ugh, oh, sheer vandalism. Only an ignorant person could do such a thing. Cold fingerprints. I think we're looking for a man with a cold moustache. A malpal butt. You haven't gained enough info yet.
the parasites of creativity, hmm. or just a reflection of the artist's recreational interests. Saturn devouring, Saturn his, devouring son. his son. Oh, grim composition. I can love that painting. I'm flinching in its ferocity, yet somehow beautiful. Not even trying, oh, Sherry. On. Concentrate. Okay, let's think about this. All right, let's let's see what happens. I was thinking that uh, Vogel could have been burning um empty frames. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the hatch bolt. He accidentally pushed a shovel to the floor. Oh, Vogel the heard the noise. At the sound out, yeah. of his approaching footsteps, the intruder hid inside the coffin. When Vogel entered the basement, he failed to notice anything strange and left without properly checking. The intruder waited until Vogel had left the caravanserai before burning the paintings in Wilde's room. But the vandalism was a cover for the theft. The pieces are not what I expected. What do you think my collection is about? I think it's about decadence, personally. Seems to fit with his vibe. Dozens of priceless works amassed simply for the sake of it and presented without care. It's not about the art, it's about excess, yes? I don't know. Well, that's absurd. <laughs> of course you know, it's your gallery. There is no one answer, no singular truth, but many filtered through the subjective mind. That forgetting, embellishing, lying machine. Besides, what's wrong with a lie if it makes life more interesting? What's wrong with a lie? It corrupts the ability of others to behave freely and rationally. Men never act freely and rationally anyway. It matters not what is or isn't in the end. The only important thing is how you feel. And I simply want to feel and consume as much as I can. Don't you? Feelings are simply one's animal ancestry trying to Rest That's back right, control Sherlock. of the brain. I try to avoid the distraction. You try not to feel, even in a place like this? None of it moves you? To be frank, I struggle to maintain even a wit of interest in art. But Mr. Holmes, it is joy incarnate, mankind's greatest achievement. Mankind's highest achievement above all others is objective and rational thought. I see then why you dislike art. For it means whatever you wanted to. Or perhaps, Mr. Vogel, I was lying. Aha. Uh -huh. I'll say it was an interesting case. Mr. Vogel, my investigation has revealed that the intrusion was not merely vandalism, but theft. The limping visitor left your place with a canvas. That's very impressive. Limping visitor? This thief was familiar with the gallery and he was sporting a limp. Do any of your clients or artists come to mind? My. Your attention to detail is remarkable, Mr. Holmes. I should introduce you to Bosch's works. 
Alas, I'm afraid I cannot suggest a culprit. The fire was a clever attempt to hide a stolen painting, even if it didn't fool me. I found the remnants of an empty frame in the pile of ashes. The canvas had been removed. Do you know which paintings in the Wild Room may have interested a thief? Were any particularly expensive? Those pieces belong to a well-known artist named Boniface Mercurio. They're controversial, but not of a notably high value. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the latch and dislodged the shovel while doing so. That's the noise you heard yesterday. When you went downstairs to investigate, he hid in the... Hmm. It seems I should have checked the space more thoroughly. There's something more, is there not? I can see it in your eyes. Hmm. Indeed. There is another intriguing angle. I recently received an anonymous offer for one of Mercurio's works. The sum was more than fair, and indeed could have saved Mercurio from his artistic poverty. But he declined it. Was it a performative whim? Some artists lionize pain and hardship as if their work would be worse after a meal and a hot bath. I cannot tell. But not only did he refuse the deal, he insisted on displaying the painting in the public space. I was hoping to change his mind, but artists are a special breed of stubborn. Where does he live? So where can I find Boniface Mercurio? I know he lives somewhere in Old City, but couldn't be more specific. He's a prominent figure, so finding him shouldn't be a problem. Can you describe it? What was depicted in the piece? Hmm. A bound woman, wrapped in robes, being penetrated by a red devil that stared at us, the viewer. The beast had numerous tails growing from his back, and a large crowd gathered around the pair, silently watching the orgiastic scene. Okay, well, given the nature of the other works on display, it's hard to see why that one stood out. What could possibly be its value? The evaluation of art is very subjective, Mr. Holmes. After all, art is everything. A poem, a bruise, the beads of sweat on your beloved skin. Even a masterfully solved crime. I'm not sure I see the connection. Regardless, the painting was one of a series called The Sabbath Night in Cordona. The works depict sex, violence, and other controversial acts that life, for better or worse, contains. Ah, I see. I'm not sure that you do, but that can wait for another time. Well, I believe I have enough to begin. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Your gallery certainly has unexpected depths. I'm delighted to have been able to please a friend. In return, I expect you to come back with good news. Or at least with a good story. See that all evidence collected sign.
occupation in old cities. Correct? Maybe. Okay. That's still cool with me. Uh, uh. Alright. So we're gonna go to Cordova Chronicle. Because I feel like we probably. What the fuck am I? Gotten it if it was at the city hall. Old City. Oh my. I need to pin the right fucking info. God damn it. The past week has brought us this new scandal regarding the local so called artist, artistic higher society. It all began with the painting sellout named. Uh, by local artist Dance of the uh, Decadence. The director of the publishing house, The Lion, Darren Turwick, broke the idol by throwing a chair at a decadent artist, uh, Boniface Mercurio. As Mr. Turwick said later, he did it because Mr. Mercurio brought dishonor to his name. The poem read Christian so reminds the reader that the recently, uh, the recently Mr. Mercurio was bought with Mr. Turwick at, with Mrs. Turwick at a coffee shop. Afterwards, an orchestra conductor, Kurt Gallagher, smashed a panning across Mr. Turwick's head to protect his friend Mercurio. A large brawl started, including a large number of the customers. Uh, after a protracted fight, the police arrived. All the high society brawls were under arrest and placed under guard for a week. The best thing event it was. As a loyal uh, personal advisor, I suggest you obtain a souvenir from the cell. Unfortunately, it has uh, since ended. But Boniface Mercurio himself invites our readers to his home. He had to purchase one of his paintings. You will find him at the address of uh, Hermes Avenue between Scarlet Street and Olive Road. Uh, Scarlet Street and... Scarlet Street and Olive Street. Avenue, Scarlet Street, Olive Street. Greetings, ma'am. I'm looking for the- I don't care who you're looking for. You shall not pass. No visitors allowed. I wish to buy a painting from Mr. Boniface Mercurio. Is he at home? Dearie, tell me because- 
old age has made me blind. Did someone write Information Bureau on my forehead? Because I'm not here to answer your questions. Entry is for residents only. If you aren't a resident, please leave, or I shall report you to the police. look like the okay now let's go down here because they probably just updated the clothes shop and some items from the back and I love it when they only updated halfway through the case Come, come, decorate your house in oriental style. Don't miss out on my unique clothes. Oh, hey, look at that. Bohemian. Messy hair, artist bristles, artist ten pounds. A good choice. A good choice indeed. Fair enough. Boniface, sweetie. Is that you? Ah, old age does terrible things to one's sight. I didn't recognize you at first. How are you, Mum? I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost my key. Do you have a spare? For heaven's sake! How many times will you lose that key of yours? Of course I have a spare. You artists all live in your own little world. Please, accept my thanks. I would rather accept your rent. You promised to pay me several weeks ago, and I'm still waiting. I will pay you, I promise, very soon. You'd better do, my dear. Or else I'll just change the lock. And I won't fall for those cow eyes. <laughs> oh, this man's dead. Use a lot of imagination in this case. It appears the wine was truly awful. I wonder where he got that fancy camera. Despite the overall tendency towards mess, you cannot sit with the drawer pulled out like this. Someone left it after searching. Aunt May Whiskey, Brandy Bucks. Quite a collection he had here. Brandy Bucks, is that a reference to Brandy Buck? The chest has been searched. Mary Duck, Brandy Buck. The blood has dried. I've heard of this style of painting. It is called expressionism. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, Sherry. I will not touch that dirty floor. Judging by post-mortem rigidity, the body lay here for one or two days. The wound is precise. It was inflicted by a razor or a knife.
A normal kitchen knife. Could be the murder weapon. <laughs> Suicide? Soaked in blood. It seems as if the puddle of blood was here before the rags. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Look at this, John. Isn't it our stolen demon? Red skin, tails on the back, reminds me of Verda's description of the stolen painting. Not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even oh, trying, come Sherry. On. Come on. Now what is it? <laughs> Mercurio was developing photographs when the intruder snuck in. Mercurio heard him coming. While the thief was searching the chest, the painter ran towards him with a bottle in his hand. He smashed it across the thief's head. The intruder had no choice but to defend himself, and the weapon of opportunity happened to be a kitchen knife. Mercurio stepped aside to grab the painting, but the wine-blinded thief attacked Mercurio's throat. When the thief came to his senses, he saw Mercurio bleeding on the floor. He grabbed the rags and tried to bandage him, but it was too late. Why did Mercurio attempt to snatch the painting in the middle of a fight? To strike the intruder? Not with his painting, it was too important to him. It's time for some chemical magic, John. Oh, negative four, negative six. Pretty easy. Chemicals, still life, painting, 
doesn't look like the painting we need, Sherry. As expected, but that doesn't mean it won't tell us anything. Let's put it on the easel where it belongs. I guess this is his most ordinary painting. Spot the two differences, John. If the intruder didn't take it, the skull should be somewhere here. Nothing behind it. I guess this is his most ordinary painting. Spot the two differences, John. I guess this is his most ordinary painting. Spot the two differences, John. Okay, we've got the differences. If the intruder didn't take it, the skull should be somewhere here. monster was actually a man. Poor girl. John, you ought to be thrilled. We are now hunting the devil himself. Uh, what were you saying, Sherry? I was too busy sketching the scene, you know? Crimes and such like. Daily routine. Did you find something? A photograph. It depicts a man in a red suit with tails sprouting from his back and multiple people in masks watching the scene. It all adds up. But the act of love, it wasn't given ah, willingly, John. I see. It was a violation. Oh, shit. Girl, she was with child. Give that to me now. Did you recognize someone? No. Although the victim is not from Cordona, she is African. Look at the ritual scars on her face. Get that image out of your brain. You have to continue the investigation. I must speak to the landlady. Perhaps she saw or heard something. Sherry, you cannot tell her the truth about Mercurio. It will hurt her. John, that's illogical. Sooner or later, she will come here and discover a corpse, and I still need to talk to her. Just avoid mentioning corpse. All right? Stick to the character. Tell her to call the police. I'll take that into account. And wait here. I've redrawn the people in the photograph. Now you can proceed with your investigation without those horrific details. God damn, this game just gets fucking dark sometimes. What's wrong, dear? You look like you've seen the ghost. Mr. Mercurio is dead. Oh. Is this... Uh, is this some kind of joke, Boniface? What do you mean you're dead? I mean that Boniface won't ever pay his rent again. Oh, my dear. If you need to delay your payment for another week, that is all right. There is no need for these games. But this is the last time you hear me. It's not about payment, Ma. If you open Mercurio's flat, you can see the dead body for yourself. Dearie. You will not trick me into entering your flat again, do you hear? I am not Mercurio. I am investigating the theft of one of his paintings, and I chose to deceive you by disguising myself as Mercurio to get inside his flat. Very well, I'll play along. You're not Mercurio. Mercurio has died, metaphorically, or not. What else do you want? Mom, you're very difficult. All right, let's return to the point. Can you tell me if anyone else has recently entered the flat? Oh, you're talking about that limping man. Uh, I'm I sorry I let him in. I was scared. And I thought maybe... Maybe he would motivate you to find money so that you would pay your rent. No offense, dear. Can you describe him? Oh, so you weren't at home. I was so certain you didn't leave your flat that day. 
he was of average height, had a limp and a tattoo on his neck, and he was smoking Malpal cigarettes. My husband used to smoke those. They have a horrible smell I can recognize from a mile away. Can I ask a favor? Of course, dearie. Please call the police and ask them to enter the flat, and don't look inside until they come up. What? What trouble have you stepped in this time? It really doesn't matter. Thank you, Mum. Alright. Alright, I decided to play along last second because uh, I was getting so many chances. Sherry, that was close. But you did everything correctly. Now, take off your outfit. I can't let you walk around in a dead man's clothes. Okay. Let's switch me to this suit. Interesting. I do like the Victorian vampire outfit. I might run around in this a little more often. Yeah, let's uh choose work here. Do you know anything about this? I like you, friend, but I can't help you. Is this familiar to you? Yes, friend. I know something about this business. Scars on the girl's face seem to be from Uyghur's ethnic group tribe. The only place we can find Uyghur's people in Perdona's refugee camp located on the Victoria Bridge between Scaladio and Silverton. Beasts! What the fuck? Another officer? Murderers! They're completely livid. First they come to our land, then they murder our people. Murder. Drop them all into the sea! Where do you think you're going? Speak with the chief. Sir, this place is off limits to the public. Please state your business or leave, or I shall request that the police escort you out. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking for a witness for a case. A private investigator? Really? Even so, you're not authorized. I can't let you in. And you are? I'm Ronald Harlow. Here to handle the refugee situation on behalf of City Hall. I'm the acting supervisor here, so I have full authority here to ask you to leave, or I shall order the police to detain you for trying to pass the blockade. Please, step back. Try 
this to a Kohle. Wants to look authoritative. He's clearly stressed. Sedentary. Let's endorse with poor lighting. I want to go with Dazed Formalist, personally. I think it just makes more sense for this character. What about the murder that this crowd keeps shouting about? It's mere assumption. I assure you that the situation is under the police's control. I know you want to deal with this in the right way. You are obviously a professional and a responsible person, but you clearly have never handled a situation like this before. I am handling it, Mr. Holmes. Don't question my capability here. And tell me how you do it. You can't even calm this gathered crowd and ask for the police. They're not quite managing it either, are they? You consider yourself a problem solver, but until today, you've been solving problems sitting at your desk in a dark corner of a city hall room. Here, you need a more practical approach. What are you driving at, Mr. Holmes? I can help you to handle the situation if you're truly interested in solving things quickly and quietly. And how exactly would you manage that? Simply tell the police that I'm the City Hall and I'm permitted to investigate the scene. I'll work out the rest, but in return I need your help finding my witness. She's a young refugee. She's with child or was with child recently. Look, there is indeed a dead body inside the camp. So even if the girl you are looking for is there, all the refugees are now being detained and interrogated by the police. They won't allow you to speak with her, and I can't do anything about that until the situation settles down. So it's in our mutual interest, is it? Oh. I suppose that things are bad enough that I ought not shy away from help. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell the police to allow you to come inside. Just tell me when you're ready. Mr. Harlow, how did the refugees end up here, etc.? Oh. So you're not from around here yourself? I've been away for some time. But I read the papers. Yes, this whole story has been in the papers for almost a year now. They were smuggled to Cordona on a ship from Africa. Smuggled? Then why didn't you deport them? The smugglers managed to sneak them to shore and hide them inside an abandoned warehouse. When the police raided the warehouse and found the refugees there, the ship was already gone. We aren't even certain as to which ship it was. We have busy shipping routes with other colonies these days, you see. So you decided to lock them up under a bridge? There was no other option. We're still trying to work out what to do with them. I only hope we'll find a humane solution, and not put them on a raft and float them out to sea. Mr. Harlow, what exactly do you do here? What are your responsibilities? What I do, and what I am responsible for, are two different realities, Mr. Holmes. On paper, I am in charge of the camp territory, security, provision, and the refugees in general. What I actually do most of the time is knock on every city hall door trying to obtain some funding, or at least rations for the camp. The police here on City Hall's behalf too? They are. Minus those who came here after the body was found. The governor won't let the refugees disperse into the island, so there's a significant police presence guarding the camp. Naturally, they answer directly to the police. I have some influence here, but I'm not their direct authority. Let's go on. I'm ready to take a look at the scene. All right. Go inside the camp and find Inspector Chooksbury. He's the officer investigating the scene. Tell him I sent you. Say you're an independent expert from City Hall. He'll fill in the details for you. I'll find my way with words. Thank you, Mr. Hart. So they keep these refugees under a bridge like proverbial trolls. No wonder the people outside are so disturbed. Who the hell are you? How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow let me in, sir. 
I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewkesbury, I presume? A surveyor? What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office, and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paperworm sent to count money and get food for archive mold. Go on, look around, but don't make yourself too at home. As if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there near their kitchen. He's in a bad way. You mentioned a woman screaming who attracted the bypasses on the bridge. Was she harmed? No, she's all right, but perhaps the whole debacle started because of her. She started wailing and the refugees stood up for the girl. And where is this young woman now? Back there in the shacks, same as the rest of the refugees. She's been questioned by my men, but she's just some refugee girl. Can't understand much English. Do you have any suspects yet? You're joking, right? I've got a whole camp full of suspects. And if you ask me, this bloke had it coming. Better bury him and forget about the whole thing. And now there's a crowd okay, gathered at the camp, and my superiors say we must thoroughly interrogate the refugees. At least those who can understand any English. Do you believe that your superiors wish to get rid of the refugees? I think that both our superiors would rather keep the story quiet. Since that's an unaffordable luxury now, they're looking how to protect their public image. That's why I have to waste my time waiting for my people to turn every stone and befriend every refugee. Did you learn anything about the dead man? The fellow looks like a thug. I've had dozens like him fished out of the sea over the past 20 years. Ever since these refugees arrived, there have been people on Cordona with bad blood in them. My best bet is that this thug had something against them too. And no clue as to his identity? He had some items on his body, but nothing to indicate who he was or where he was from. I think I should catalogue his possessions in my records. Go on. They're on the table near the body. Okay. Here we go again. Number of hours on Cordona before stumbling upon another dead body. Zero. Clearly a left handprint here. What a pleasant man this Mr. Tewkesbury is. A fresh crack, as if the crate was hit recently. Someone bled profusely here. A furrow in the ground. A blood trail leading to or from the canal. A man's footprint. Police boots. Always happy to trample evidence. A heavy boot with a worn-out sole. These events have fractured into so many pieces. But I know you can collect them all, Sherlock. Well, carnelian agate beads, a traditional African adornment. No hint of blood or impact. It might have been used as an improvised weapon. The blood sprayed off the blade after the strike. The cut is deep, potentially serious if not treated immediately. He is in shock, feverish and dehydrated. Sherry, you know first aid. Surely you have a duty to help this man. You can't leave him to certain death. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Oh. Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more.
That will kill, not save him. Someone was dragged against their will. The refugees have been detained and will not leave until all the circumstances are clarified. No one deserves to end up in a place like this. It won't do any good. I'll use it to create a solution. Some kind of secret. Malpal, soaked with salt water. One thousand pounds. A fair sum, especially considering British currency isn't very common in Cordona. A simple leather sheath. Perfect for a dirk. Hmm, coal dust under the nails. I don't see much coal around here. A steel dirk, sharp. A common accessory among sailors and soldiers. Tattoo. An interesting tattoo. Does it mean something? I'd say the blade penetrated upward. However, the wound is too messy to be certain. Heavy boots, with one sole far more worn than the other. This man was limping, John. Ah. A violent death. But this man, limping. Cold us. I think we're onto something here, John. You know what? I'd like to understand. I'm what? afraid these. How did our dead man end up inside the camp in the first place? I can use this to stop the infection from spreading. A mess. If they find out about Let's the figure passage, it out. Everything will go to hell. Nobody will know anything if you keep your bloody mouth shut. Sherry, just the coppers smell fishy here, Sherry. Perhaps we should sniff around in the camp a little more thoroughly. Just washed. Better than nothing to bandage the wound. I've collected all the ingredients now to prepare the first aid solution. Feels like there's been more than usual in this one. Should make you feel better, my friend. Now remain lying down and drink as much water as you can. 
Well done, Sherry. At least he won't die from the infection. Well done, Sherry. Okay. At least he won't die from the infection. Can I ask you a question? Oh, I don't know about that. Ask one of the others. You still here? The guards at the sewers were speaking about taking refugees out of the camp. Do you know anything about this, Inspector? Less than you do, obviously. And this doesn't bother you as an officer of the law? I can neither punish them nor put them on the right track, if that's what you're asking. Maybe your friends at City Hall could do something about it, but I seriously doubt that. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of being frowned on for my uniform. If those fine gentlemen you've eavesdropped on are in some shady business, that's on their heads. I hope I'm not making a grave mistake in trusting you, Mr. Holmes. Sealed shut. I doubt our man could get through these grates. Okay, give me a second here. It's unlikely anyone could get in or out of the camp by water without alerting the police guards. No, it's too short for these walls or cliffs. I don't 
I'll see you later. I'm gonna try this out one more time. What? It didn't even. Okay. A single Malpal butt. Roadman cigarettes. A brand highly regarded by law enforcement officers. So there wasn't any sophisticated infiltration plan. The good old police just let the man into the camp. Now we have everything we need to get the full picture of what happened at the camp. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. So we have a thug who came to take a refugee woman with him. She resisted, but he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick, yet he could do nothing against a cutthroat with a blade. The man didn't anticipate that the other refugees would intervene and stand against him. In the confusion, the woman managed to break free. The thug took fright and fled. He was stopped by the falling crates. He stumbled and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. However, the wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to stand, but still bleeding, he lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Before all of this, the man had freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police admitted him after they had a short smoke together. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. In our man's case, it's the same sword. You still here? Ah. Inspector, I believe I can aid your investigation. I know who the dead man is and what really happened to him. You do? Well, good for you. But I'm afraid I'm not the one you need to share your findings with. Speak to Mr. Harlow here. He's the one responsible for settling things in the camp. You don't even care to listen? Oh, I do care. And maybe even more than I need to. But I'm only here today to lock the place up, question witnesses, and file the facts. It's sad, but coming up with conclusions is not among my tasks here. You fellows at City Hall do that. Anyway, speak to the supervisor. I'll just stand by and listen to what you have to say. Mr. Harlow, your refugees didn't murder anyone. What? Pray tell me what you've learned. All right, listen carefully. This might solve one problem for you, but will create a few more. Oh. Well, that's a great start. The man came to the camp intending to kidnap one of your refugees, a woman. 
What he didn't expect was that the refugees would stand up to protect the woman. A brawl had broken out. In the chaos of it, the man stumbled over those crates and fell on his own blade. How do you know he fell on his own blade? The wound in his chest was inflicted from an unusual angle. It was not an offensive stab, shall we say. The refugees didn't touch him. And judging by the blood at the scene, the intruder managed to raise himself but was unable to walk very far. He ultimately fell into the canal. But how did he sneak into the camp? Why didn't the police see him? And this is where your new problems emerge, Mr. Harlow. What do you mean? You're not a dull-witted man. You know what I mean. There is no feasible way to get into the camp without the police guards knowing of it. <sighs> the pile of mess I had to sort out has just become bigger. But somehow that doesn't surprise me. Anyway, I thank you for your help, Mr. Holmes. I'll take it from here. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the police aren't detaining the refugees any longer. You can go back in and look for your witness. You think one small clock can make any difference in this place? Who knows, John? Just one ill-fitting cog could make the whole machine crumble. Yeah, I just popped something on my fucking leg that, uh... I started bleeding. Um, don't know what the hell that was about. You're the one who tended to our man's wounds. I thank you greatly. The police didn't allow us to help him. The police will leave you alone now. I've proven to them that the man who came into the camp died due to his own foolishness. Thank you for standing up for us. But nobody would help us without a reason. You're here because you want something. Yes, I do. I need to speak with the girl drawn here. Mm. The dead man came for her too. He wanted to take the girl away. But we won't allow her to be hot again. What do you want from Nayla? Nayla. She was hurt some time ago. I'm here to find the people who did this and bring them to justice. And to find them, I need Naila's help. Will you let me speak to her? Justice. There's no justice I in this justice. Land. But you helped us, so maybe your words are not empty. You can speak to Naila, if she wants it. But I will be watching you. Hello, Naila. <laughs> My name is Sherlock. I know someone hurt you. I am here to help. I'm trying to find the people involved and bring them to justice, please. There is a photograph, and I'm sorry, it is terrible, but I simply must ask. Where did this happen? What can you tell me about these people? Christ, Sherlock. <laughs> Nayla, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very good at this. You come here for me, but you are rude and cruel and condescending. A cross. The man had this cross. Now go away. Leave us be. I do not need another white man's help. Oh, glad that wasn't me. Not my best work, John. By a long shot. Naylor doesn't want us meddling. I'm starting to wonder what this all achieves. But she helped you anyway. Now we know that maniac's face and the cross he wore, we can still catch him. Do you know anything about this? They often take us from the camps to work. Most don't mind, though. It's the only way we get a glimpse of freedom. So there's a smuggling ring in the camp. This wasn't the first time that someone freely entered the camp to take a refugee out. At least it was certainly his last time. My gut tells me that we'll learn more about this ring when we find out where the thug came from. Indeed, I think we will.
owe you a lot, Mr. Holmes. You still here? I've already told you all I've learned. The intruder has a most peculiar tattoo on his neck, two lines and a point. Do you know anything about... You really want to know, kid? Why? You want to play a policeman or something? I'm sure you have it in your records, so it won't hurt if I have it in mine. In my records, it's just a tattoo, as it should be in yours. Ah, to hell with you. Suit yourself as to what you're going to do with it. Off the record, though. Such tattoos are often connected to a man named Mr. Niccolo Bernadotti. Bernadotti, you say? A respectable businessman in Scaladio. His company imports goods and wines, and smuggles everything that can be smuggled between the colonies and the mainland. His people can be identified by an obscure tattoo. Just like the one over there our friend has. But these are all merely rumors, you see. If Mr. Bernadotti was a criminal, he'd be in prison now. Or hanged, right? Okay. Okay, so I gotta... hold on. Okay, let's, uh, let's get going. This one's gonna be police archives. I think this one. Norton, born in 1840 in London, graduated from the University of Oxford in 1864. In 1869, started working in the Home Office as Secretary. In 1875, took position as a military commissioner in India, honored by the Queen herself with the Order of the Bath in 1877. First of March, 1878, was appointed as the British Envoy in Cordona Hall, with his cabinet in the City Hall. If you're here on matters of signing up for military service, come back tomorrow. Our department needs to straighten out some business. Why are you staring at me like I'm a Madame Tussauds figure? Didn't you hear what I just said? On my way here, I was wondering whether you might regret what you did. I tried my best to retain at least a shred of faith in humanity. I had hoped that you would hear her scream, see her face in your dreams, or at least once ask yourself how Nayla might feel. Who? Neither of my hopes were fulfilled. Why are you here? Do you recognize this man? Hmm. We definitely look alike. But you have the wrong person. Really? Then you won't mind if I pass this along to the newspaper? All right. All right. Is this about money, as you said in the letter? What kind of sum are we talking about? I've never written a single word to you. Bribery, not my style. 
So, that letter, it wasn't from you? Well, it appears that more and more people in the city are finding out about your despicable hobby, doesn't it? You're in the clutches of justice, and very soon they will squeeze you. It's in your best interest to cooperate. Fine. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. Do you drink, Mr...? Sherlock Holmes. And I do not. Shame. All the best discussions are accompanied by a glass of whiskey. But out of respect for you, I won't drink either. Respect? That's an unusual word in your mouth, Mr... Where are my manners? My name is Thomas Norton, a British envoy in Cordona on a military mission. So, where do we start? You mentioned blackmail. Tell me about it. All right. A couple of days ago, I received an anonymous letter. It said that in the art gallery at Caravansary, there exists a painting that incriminates me. The blackmailer made it clear that if there is a painting, then a photograph exists too. And I should be wary of what it might do to my reputation. What does the blackmailer want? Money, of course. What else do such people want? Needless to say, I don't remember anyone taking photographs at the party. Up until the last moment, I hoped he was bluffing. But he wasn't, as you've just proven to me. Show me the letter. I burnt it as soon as I read it. Mm. I've left enough evidence. There's no need for any more. What happened? So, let's return to the beginning. What happened at the party? I vaguely remember that night. As usual at such parties, you meet people, you talk with them, they invite you to spend some time alone with them. What can I say? I got myself mixed up with the wrong company, and somebody must have mixed some psychoactive substance in my drink. After that, it's all blurry. I completely lost my sanity. I made a terrible mistake which I regret deeply. You don't say. Do refugee girls often appear on the menu at those types of parties? It's rather rare. So you didn't attend the party to engage in an exotic experience involving a vulnerable woman unable to accuse you of assault? I would never have planned such a terrible thing. What happened was just bad circumstance. This sounds like fucking... <laughs> I sound like Chris Hansen right now to catch a predator. Boniface Mercurio, does the name mean anything to you? He's an artist, right? The one responsible for the painting that compromises you. I found him dead in his room. Oh, that is bad. Wait, you don't think that I have anything to do with this? You had motive to kill him. Maybe I did, but listen. I know how this looks, but murder? That's on another level. I had thoughts that this Mercutio... Mercurio. Well, him, yes. I thought he could have been the blackmailer. But I was too afraid to make any hasty decisions. There were plenty of ways to fail by making a move, so I chose to wait. To see what he would do next. You have to believe me. I don't believe people, I believe evidence. Then look at the evidence. The painting that depicted you in the image of the devil was stolen by a mercenary. Did you have anything to do with it? I might be a rotten person, sir, but hiring criminals for illicit purposes is not in my daily schedule. And buying the painting in an attempt to hide the crime, is that on your daily schedule? What would you do in my situation? I would never put myself in such a situation. Precisely. You're young. I could never have imagined myself in my current position. Yet, here I am in front of you. We all make mistakes, Mr. Holmes. And I'm no exception. Mr. Holmes, I've built my entire career on hard work and uncompromising dedication to the Crown. I made a mistake. But I'm not a villain from some cheap adventure fiction. By putting me behind bars, you will benefit precisely no one. Rotting in prison is the least you deserve, but I have a better idea. You will make amends and help the ones you hurt. Use your connections to help patriate the refugees, find them decent homes, give them jobs. There must be a meaning to your position and my decision. Yes. All right, I can do that. So, will you give me the photograph now? That's not all. Nayla deserves the very utmost of what you can do. Help the girl? I can't risk the press paying extra attention to her. I will do anything except that. I need to think this all through. Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. 
I take your point. Yeah, I'm not giving him a photograph no matter what. Fucking hit you, dude. I swear the writing is top notch. I love all of the stories and shit so well. And uh, this one, this one has been a hell of a, a hell of a wonderful experience. It's fucking for all the mechanical faults of this game. I don't think I've ever really had big issues with the writing. There's been minor things here and there that I'm sure I've pointed out as we played the game. But overall, I, I would consider this game a fucking triumph. Frogwares. Definitely one of their masterpieces. Right up there with Crime and Punishment. is a businessman and patron, uh, well known in Cordona, the founder and owner of the Bernadotti Company LTD, established 1873 main office, Southeastern Scaladio, Bazaar Road, near the crossing of Roman Road. Mr. Bernadotti was brought in for questioning on February 13, 1876, after a from an order anonymous sources. The source provided information that points to Mr. Bernadotti's connections to the smuggling of liquors and items of antique art between the British colonies, Cordona, and the rest of the United Kingdom. People alleged that the work for Mr. Bernadotti's company were previously linked to a number of Unlawful activities including robbery, violence, racketeering, and blackmailing. Mr. Burundotti was called in for questioning as a witness, uh, since there is some tangible evidence available to serve any charges. During the questioning carried out by myself and Officer Booth, Mr. Burundotti claimed to, to be unaware of any operations and facts provided by our source. No information could be obtained on his activities before he moved to Britain, documented or otherwise. As Mr. Burundotti claims, up until 1873, he lived in Sicilia, Italy, where he had a vending business until he moved to London and began importing goods. Pigeons is not possible to incriminate Mr. Burundotti with anything connected to the case. Inspector Herbert Ryder. Southeastern Scaladio, Bizarre Road, Roman Road. An impressive slice of life. The police had a lot on him, and at the same time, nothing at all. Amateurs. Southern Scaladio. Southeastern Scaladio, Bizarre Road, and Rome.
Help me, please. Doesn't remember. Remind me of anything. Someone else can help better, sir. It seems they're not expecting guests. I won't wait for an invitation, John. Found it. These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. They're shipped from Cape Town. The wine route from colony to colonies. This earthenware came a long way from the Staffordshire potteries. Porcelain friend for every child. That's our way in, Sherry. Go. No. This is private property. You lost something. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm investigating a robbery, and Mr. Bernadotti may be just the man to help me with... You're a copper. I have nothing to do with the police. I... Mr. Bernadotti isn't seeing anyone. You have three seconds to walk away, or you'll never walk again. Capito? It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One... Listen, the man Bernadotti sent to Cho. Oh, fuck it. I did try to resolve this peacefully. Time for you until next month. Oh, I'm coming for you. Take a rest, my friend. I'm coming. I couldn't miss the party. I'm coming for you. The snuff's ready. Don't miss the party. Don't bother moving. You've lost. Too simple. I'm coming for you. It's time to knock this guy out.
Give him the pepper snuff. Hello there. <laughs> Don't cry. Give him the pepper snuff. <laughs> Don't bother moving. The snuff's ready. Take a rest. Give him the pepper snuff. Easy. You've disappointed me so much, Sherlock. Sherry, look! This seems familiar. Is that a code reference? Is this? No, sir. Don't hurt me. It's all right. I won't harm you. Like you did see on the folks there. on the way here. Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? All right, we've got the painting here now. Don't come any closer. One step and I'll stretch it to pieces. Keep standing in my way and no one will ever see you again. Right, so. Yes. Yep. Well, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I think I hear... I've got to... It's better I leave. Whoa. Oh, wow. That was as if somebody put my words in your mouth. This is it. This is where all the magic happens. Please don't shoot me. I have a family. Yeah, yeah you're fucking good. So, you've cut through all the guards just to talk to me. Then come here, and we shall talk. Whenever you're ready. I'd hate to intrude. Niccolo Bernadotti, I presume. The name is Sherlock Holmes, and I'm afraid I bring bad tidings. Is that so? The man you sent to the refugee camp failed in his task. He impaled himself on his own blade. Clumsy and chaotic end. For a man who just broke onto my property, you are more businessman than brute. You have my attention, Mr. Holmes. Do not waste it. Mr. Bernadotti, do you know the name Boniface Mercurio? I do not. Mercurio was a local artist. Recently, a man broke into his apartment, ransacked the place, and killed him. The thief was looking for something. You are testing my patience, boy. In a moment, the connection will reveal itself. I was hired, privately, to investigate the recent theft of a painting from an art gallery. My investigation led me to a man from your organization, and thus, to you, Mr. Bernadotti. That is quite a stretch. Why would I need to steal a painting when I could buy any one I wanted? Interestingly enough, I spotted the stolen painting in your storeroom. I buy and sell a lot of things, Mr. Holmes. Unfortunately, if this is true, it is not the first time I have been sold stolen merchandise. I presume you were hired by the owner of the gallery. Tell them to contact me, and we'll sort out the situation. So. This painting is why you broke into my office. As I said, your man was found dead in the refugee camp. He was there to kidnap a woman, but the other refugees intervened to try and save her. The ensuing scuffle resulted in the man's accidental suicide. 
He sported the same tattoo as your men in this building. In fact, it also bears a resemblance to the one on your neck. Care to explain what business your man had with this woman? You have no idea what you are talking about. I can assure you this was no kidnapping. The refugees in the camp are on edge. What happened there is a tragic accident, one I am not responsible for. For what reason was your man there if not to abduct her? Why would I answer? You are yet to justify your presence in the slightest. So many words, so little action. When you barged into my office, Mr. Holmes, I got the impression you wanted to talk business. Now I see you had come just to talk. Tell me exactly what you want, or get out. It was necessary groundwork for what comes next. I have enough evidence to conclude that the gallery thief, the artist's killer, and the dead man in the camp are all the same person. Your time is almost up, Mr. Holmes. Before you draw your gun, there is one final detail I am yet to mention. The young woman your man was tasked to collect from the refugee camp had been defiled at a perverse masquerade party. That violation was captured in a photograph by Boniface Mercurio and used as a reference for his painting. The photo shows the attacker's face. Finally. That's why you're here, Mr. Holmes. You have the photograph. It is what your man was after when he broke into Mercurio's apartment, and it is what you're after too, isn't it, Mr. Bernadotti? You have the photograph with you. How much do you want for it? I am not naive enough to carry it with me, but I am yet to decide what I shall do with it. I know the man in the photo is a British envoy. What interest do you have in his down- I must admit, I am rather impressed by how comprehensively you have pursued this matter. And so, you deserve the honest answer. My business dealings are often arduous in their bureaucracy. A man in his position, willing to look the other way, could ease my work significantly. In return, I will make sure no one looks his way either. A favor for a favor. Also known as blackmail, the modus operandi of any true professor. It was not originally my idea. Mercurio set things in motion, extorting the envoy for the most trivial of ends. Money. In response, the envoy hired my man to retrieve the painting and the photograph, eliminating Mercurio's leverage. I only learned the whole story after the artist was killed in his home. And rather than extricate yourself, instead you took over Mercurio's vent. It fell into my lap. As a businessman, I simply seized the opportunity. Now, how much do you want for the image? Why did you send your man to remove the woman from the camp? Without a photograph, her testimony was the next best thing. Securing her was in everyone's interest. Victims and witnesses all too often disappear. I thought the girl was cipher with us. I did not anticipate what would happen at the camp. I could not help but appreciate the collection of smuggled artifacts in your storeroom. You have rather diversified your business. Oh, oh, high and mighty of you, Mr. Holmes. Not all smuggling is immoral. I pay generous rates to developing cultures and spread their culture to eager buyers. And furthermore, I supply many immigrants with a taste of home. A very convenient way of thinking. I have traveled wildly, Mr. Holmes. I've seen people in far-flung lands for whom my services are a lifeline. Without them, they would starve. The tax on cargo is often so absurd that it would be more profitable to simply sink your ship than dock it in the harbor. And trust me, I am speaking from experience. I saw refugees from the camp at your warehouse. They work for you. I have made certain arrangements with City Hall and the police. Thanks to me, refugees can work and be paid. It's a pathway to freedom. And how much do you save by capitalizing on their cheap labor? I have heard no complaints. They seem happy just to get out of that slum. Why should I give you the photograph? Just name your price. What if my price were not money? You claim to have connections, Mr. Bernadotti. Perhaps you could improve conditions for the refugees. Give them a chance for a better life. Ha! 
I do have connections, Mr. Holmes, but help the whole camp? You are asking too much. I could, however, make arrangements for one person. The woman who was violated will have her own home, outside the camp, solely for her and her child. She will no longer be a refugee, but a princess. That I can guarantee. Is that really possible? It will be neither fast nor easy, but I can do it. She deserves it, don't you agree? And as for her abuser, he will serve me as much as he deserves. So in your plan, everybody will be given their due. Especially you, Mr. Bernadotti. Seems like a fair deal, no? I doubt anyone could offer you better. Simply give me the photograph, and the world becomes a better place. I give you my word. Okay. Same operation as the other time. I think I'm going to do this. I think I've got to help out the whole camp in this situation. It's just, it's the only way. It's the only way that I could justify doing that. The front door's now open, sir. You can leave through it. If you want, of course. I'm missing some evidence here. Bernadotte Limited will always look forward to your visits. Sherry, don't you think this office suits me? There's more evidence that needs to be gathered. I suppose it's Mr. Bernadotte with our fine governor. 1875. It's taken a few years back. John, how many people in Cordona have a photograph with the governor, do you think? You definitely don't have one. The Bernadotte Company Limited Trade Network reaches the most distant colonies of the Great Empire. It must be very convenient for a man like Bernadotte. This marble fella, it's like he was made of... An amazing piece of culture. I you imagine many collectors and museums would be interested in having it. This sounds like it just leads outside. Ask you a question? Sorry, we don't see much here. Okay. 
This earthenware came a long way from the Staffordshire potteries. This is it. This is where all the magic happens. Please come in. Mr. Benedotti is expecting you. Oh my, did I never analyze this? A Dogon statue from West Africa. A century old at least. Masks, traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. VH Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotti Company Limited. Is that everything? There's more. I need some t if you Okay, I I need to see all the evidence here. We're right back. Okay, I I just I can't find I can't find the last evidence, so I guess I got to go. The Bernadotti Company Limited Trade Network reaches the most distant colonies of yeah, the Great Empire. I can't. I, 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 don't, I don't know what I'm missing. I just gotta go, I guess. That annoys me. I think that's the first time we've had a crime scene where I didn't get every piece of evidence. Have you thought it all through? Almost. The refugees, what will happen to them? Well, I wouldn't be standing here in this fancy office if I didn't know how to pull the right strings. In fact, it's the only thing I know. The local governor will receive a decree signed by the House of Lords containing a request to patriate the refugees in the name of the Crown. From where did you gain such influence? I never asked you how you found the photograph. So don't ask the magician how he performs his tricks. But how can I believe you? Ugh, I presume you do believe in my selfishness. The initiator of the refugee salvation will be none other than the British envoy. Saviour and protector of those in need. It's a win situation for me, too. Oh, now, I feel bad about what that. about the photograph? You deserve to be punished, but the greater good is what matters here. I won't bargain it for justice for Naylor. I'm glad that this situation is over. It will be over when you settle the matter of the refugees. You have my word, Mr. Holmes. God, that feels bad. Part of me just wishes I gave it to fucking Vogel.
Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh, he's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. Warren presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio, perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? I found the painting, but I could not retrieve it. Well then, where is In Bernadotti's office. Bernadotti? That shady businessman? Why would he steal it from me? I'm afraid you'll have to ask him yourself. Hmm. I take it you found something more, then. What happened to your crusade of truth? Was it not that important, after all? No truth will satisfy you, Mr. Vogel. It was not an attack, Mr. Holmes. If you've chosen not to tell me, I respect your intention. But it is just rather boring, isn't it? It is what it is. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Man. I am told it belonged to your mother. What is that? And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly, I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. Previously, you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh, dear. I had hoped to be wrong. She was unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. Well, we'll have to open up that package next episode? A few episodes down the line after we've uh, completed some more side quests and wrapped up the DLC for Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching this. This is the hardest moral decision I think we've had to face so far, maybe in any of the games. Um, I can think Crimes and Punishment might have had a, a, a pretty hard one at the end there, but uh, it wasn't It wasn't as, as layered as the decision in this episode. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.